Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1.6 scale ArmorTech German Early Production Tiger 1. Since the last video update, the last of the engine compartment detailing has been added and I've also been mounting in many of the mechanical and electrical components in order to get this guy up and running and fully mechanically sound. We'll be going over these additions in this video. The last detailing needs to be added to the fan compartment in order to finish it off are the air intake grills. Now if anyone is a fan of my YouTube channel and seen many of my other 1.6 scale Tiger 1 videos, you'll know that the Tiger 1 on the rear engine of the engine deck features a large metal air duct which funnels air through the grills and into the radiator and then out through the fan work. These ducts here, in addition to aiding the air flow, also act as a standoff protection for the main fuel tanks which are located directly underneath these fan ducts that we have here. Now, in the past, the fan ducts are, aren't anything new. In fact, I've been adding them to 1.6 Hill Tiger 1s and had them listed on the catalog for a period of time. However, those versions were made from sheet metal that were all hand built and soldered together in order to form the shapes that we see here. Rather than using that medium, I went ahead and designed and retooled these components and replacing the sheet metal ones with these new sets here which are made from 3D printings. The 3D printings have several advantages as opposed to the sheet metal ones. First and foremost, they require a lot less work for me to prep and get them installed. The other units had to be scratch built by hand each time. Now keep in mind that there are left and right hand units for these pieces. This does require a lot of time and a lot of effort in order to prepare these parts. With the pieces being 3D printed, this is no longer an issue. The 3D printings are also a lot more durable compared to the sheet metal ones and are far less frail and fragile compared to the thin sheet metal which is then all again soldered together for its main assembly. Now these units here have been added to the EastCoastArmory.com product line and have fully replaced the sheet metal ones which were on there for a number of years. The sheet metal units are now completely out of production and are no longer going to be fabricated. Because of the materials that these are made in, the costs are also considerably less compared to the sheet metal versions, which were listed on the catalog and almost double the price of the 3D printed counterparts that we have here on the table. Another advantage about the, the 3D printed parts is their consistency. The other pieces, even though are handmade with the use of templates, there are several variations with size due to, the, again, the handmade nature. With the 3D printed technology, this is no longer an issue and it's definitely not something that needs to be contended with. Each unit is to the exact same size and it is done in a repeatable manner. Here we have the one air duct. As you notice, the entire unit is one entire complete printing. There are no separate parts that need to be glued on in order to get the piece to the condition you see it here. These pieces are ready to go for installation directly out of box. The only thing that I'm going to do before the installation is of course pre-paint and prime these units. We have here the center support which on the real unit would connect to the fan grills which are located of course on the top. It has its support legs again all integrally printed. We have here the little cutouts which are present on the ducts and the center spindle is supported on that of a small little shelf. On the one corner there is another small little shelf. This is again as per my drawings for the Tiger 1. Moving towards the top portion here of the duct, we have here a protective wall. And on the real tank here, this is where the fuel filler spout would be for that of the fuel tank. Now on the model here, just like with most of my 1.6 scale radio controlled builds, this section here is going to be dedicated to that of refueling of the smoke system, but this will be discussed in further detail either in this video or in, a, in, a, in another video which should be posted shortly after this one. Now, like I said before, the units are right and left hand specific. The difference, of course, is being the small little 
shelf that we have here on the corner, if we notice they are they are a mirror image of each other and are on opposite sides. These units now will go into their painting and priming procedure and then from there they'll be mounted to the tank. And here are the same ducts now, fully painted and weathered and are ready for installation. As for the painting and weathering, I'm, I utilize my typical format. For the color, it's primer red. From what I've seen, primer red are the color that these ducts as also the upper fuel tanks tend to be left in. And as for the weathering, this is just all done with that of my airbrush. At this point now, they can be mounted to the tank. And here are the ducts now mounted to the tank. As for the mounting, these are installed via silicone. And to, for use as spacers, the material that was used was that of very thin sheets of styrofoam. The reason for using this method is because, like I said before in the other videos, these sections here are actually meant to be removed in case of an emergency where I have to get access to the torsion bars which are on the bottom portion of the hull. The silicone does a very adequate job in keeping everything firmly in place. They're not just going to pop off at any sudden jolt or vibration from the tank, but are temporary enough where with a good heave, good deliberate heave I should say, will overcome the adhesives and the pieces will rip out. As for the, the use of styrofoam, the styrofoam is used as a spacer and keeps the piece in this hovered state that I have here. You'll notice that it is insulated on both of the sides where the duct makes contact with that of the rear bulkhead and the piece is actually elevated and is actually sitting above the floor with again that of the silicone and the styrofoam. Now to put things in perspective on the real Tiger One the ducts are actually connected to that of the fan grills and on the real tank this whole the whole fan grill and duct unit would be one drop-in installation piece. On the tank here, for the model, this was not done. Instead, what I went ahead and did was, as you can see, the ducts are mounted to the hull, and the top deck will not have any contact with these pieces, but gives the illusion that these pieces are connected to the fan grills. The reason for that has to do with the top deck needing to be removable, being a RC tank. If these sections here were connected to the grills, which are permanently mounted to the top deck, this would be problematic and lead to some issues. By doing it this way, this does simplify the build immensely, but it does still give you the visual effect of having the the ducts connected to the grills once everything is mounted in place. And to get an idea of what I was referring to, here I have the rear panel of the top deck temporarily placed over the engine compartment. Here you can see what the duct looks like without the, the grill work present. As you can see, it has the perfect clearance for that of the top deck. And on this side here we have one of the grills temporarily placed in its appropriate location. Hopefully if the lighting comes through on camera you can see the grill work directly through the or I should say the duct work directly through the grill work. With this setup, you get to see how the illusion is placed where it looks like that the duct and the grill are one complete housing instead of the two-piece arrangement that I have designed on the model. Moving from the fan ducts takes us to the last of the detailing added to the engine compartment, which has to do with these two control rods that we have here. These two rods are a feature found exclusively on the HL210 engine, and this has to do with that of the snorkeling capability. The early Tiger One, as I've stated before, one of the features that it had was the ability to snorkel and ford through a river. Now, like I said before, the fan areas would actually free flood and would be drained out after the vehicle makes it to shore on the opposite side. As for the fan compartments themselves, because you don't want to have the fans running when the vehicle is submersed, the fans would be turned off. Now the fans are not electrically controlled on the real tank, they are mechanically controlled via this elaborate clutch mechanism that we have here.
Now, in order to prevent the fans from turning, these can be manually disengaged via these two control arms. These arms connect the levers on the inside of the tank, and with a flick of a lever, this would actuate this clutch system here, which would prevent the fans from moving, and the, the fan gearbox will just simply spin inside the engine compartment without it making contact with that of the fan mechanisms. The detailing that you see here was missing in the last video, and I was waiting for these small little universal joints to be 3D printed in order for them to be mounted to this tank. After the engine compartment was wrapped, the next area to focus on was that of the electronic and the mechanical components. Now, it's important to point out that the state that you see the model here is very, very, very early and is going to start getting much more organized and cleaned out as the interior components start getting fleshed. Right now, what we see, though, are the two following systems. We have here the smoke system and we have here the main power distribution box. In addition to the smoke system and the main power box, the batteries have also been fully strapped in and are now one with the tank at this point. The work that went into the batteries include that of fabrication of that of the jacks. This includes that for the connection to the main power and also the recharge jack which will allow you to recharge the tank once the model is fully completed and this is done via the, an outside source. We can also see that the batteries have protective boots added to the terminals. This is something that is highly recommended for anyone who's building anything like this, as having exposed leads like this is a sure bet way to cause a nasty short circuit, which with a model with very expensive electronics is definitely something that you don't want to do. As for the model smoke system, this is the same unit that was mentioned and highlighted in an earlier project update video. At this point here, it has been mounted permanently to that of the subfloor, which was also mentioned in a, another video. The smoke system is patched into this Y connector here, which then runs on the inside portion of the exhaust manifold tubes, which were showcased again in another video, which were on this model here were molded hollow for this exact same purpose. The smoke then runs through them, then out to the smoke manifolds, which then they will be emitted in these two locations over here. Now, as for this blue tube that we have here, this here is going to be used for the smoke system refueling mechanism, and I'm going to be going over more in detail on this in the next video update when this system is going to be fully completed and functional. Now, like I said before, the wiring that you see here is very, very, very raw and is definitely not going to stay this way and will change by the next video update. Basically, what you see here in this big mess of wires is that of the wires that are necessary in order to test the smoke system. Now, the way the Armortech smoke system works is that the Armortech smoke system is patched into this motor that we have here. This motor has two extra leads that come off of it, and these leads patch into the Armortech smoke system. It's a very simple system to hook up, and is one that works and is hooked up with not a whole lot of effort. Now, this will be slightly changed from this get up here, as I do have one of the Adrian Harris smoke system boxes and this here changes the input from that powers the smoke system from that of the motor to that of the Ben and Denny sound system. Of course again I'll be going over this in more detail in the next video update. Now as for the main power box on this model here I have it oriented in this location. The reason for this has to do again with the engine compartment. When you donate the back end for that of the detail engine, all of the machinery which would have been stretched and strewn out along the entire length of the hull has to now be focused all in this area over here. Now this becomes very important specifically when it comes time for orientation with that of the top deck. On this location here of the roof, we have a motor that will descend downward into the hull and this is going to be that for the turret rotation. This is why I was not able to mount this system in this location either horizontally or even on this section over here in a vertical manner. With the unit on this side here, there is no equipment that will descend down that will possibly snag and cause any interruptions. Now as for the unit, this is mounted to these two struts that we have here that are mounted 
and fasten directly to the tank's armored plate. These are held on with that of fasteners. There's a fastener that runs into the armor plate. So the unit, the column itself, is a very sturdy mount and is not one that will snap off or break with the vibrations of the tank. Also on the column is a tapped and threaded section for that of these two main mounting fasteners. These are temporarily not fastened in with that of any Loctite as Currently, this unit still needs to be removed and replaced a few times until the last of the electronics are mounted. However, the unit is still going to be figured, configured in the format that you see here. In addition to mounting the unit over here, I had to make an extension cord for this motor over here as the wires that are supplied with the kit were not long enough for it to reach the tank's new location for that of the power box. The wires were fabricated out of two lengths of wire which are the same gauge of the original armor tech ones and are simply patched in. There's no extra soldering required. I just made two new jacks and the pieces just dropped in with the exact same method as they would with the out of the box unit. Now moving from the power box takes us to some of the speakers. The sound system is the next Bit of equipment that's going to be mounted and this is going to have two speakers as well as the main audio amplifier box. The amplifier will more likely be going somewhere in this location over here. One of the speakers will be mounted here in the front straddling the two motors and the other speaker will go over here on the hull pointing backward and upward so that the sound emits from the grill work. Now because of the quality of speakers that this kit has, there's not going to be any problems with that of the actual sound system being able to be heard on the outside portion of the tank as these speakers are very powerful and if anyone watches my other videos where I have these the sound system configured, you'll see that the, the, that the sound gets picked up by the microphone on the camera as well as in person with not a whole lot of effort. To test the smoke system, currently the tank and the radio are both on, and when I give the tank some throttle, you're going to hear the fan actuate and it's going to blow the smoke from the stacks. Now, obviously, there's not going to be any engine noise because the sound system is not yet hooked up. With the smoke system, the power, and the main control module now fleshed out, the remainder of the mechanical components are going to be added, and I'm looking forward to that as I really want to get this inside to be nice and organized compared to the hot mess that I have here right now. Again, all these are going to be discussed in the next video update. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech early production German Tiger 1. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook where there are more photographs of this particular build that have been posted since project start, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that are found on the ECA channel. In addition to that, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com where there are more 1-6 and 1-16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks for watching.